Good morning to you, to all of you, and my very special thanks to Dr. Kumar for including me in his very prestigious course. This was a case of a total cataract, and CF was on the femto platform, and the, the incision in the, on the rexis by the laser had the flocculin material coming out. So I'm not sure whether I have got the entire rexis, but I have used a trifine blue dye, which I normally would not use. But as it goes on, I, it appears as if the rexis is intact. But I need to be very careful because there could be areas where the tissue bridges may not have cut it. And there could be those tags or tears. But finally, the surgery goes on well. But the learning curve in a hypermature cataract is to create a deeper offset in the anterior capsule. So this was a second case. I normally just bunch up a free-floating rexis, but somehow in this case, I need to use my capsule, uh, uh, rexis, force, uh, rexis needle to get it. And it was a very soft cataract. It was softened and segmented, and it literally in a flip mode, it all came off. And with absolute uh, ease, I'm removing the cortex. I just thought I would inflate the bag at this point of time. And lo, behold, the whole capsule comes forward as if it's an intraoperative hard eye. And then I realized why it was because it was a lax capsule and that area of dialysis and hence the capsule whole bag had come forward. So at, at this point of time, my fornis has got caught, so I just release it. And then now is the time I need to inflate the bag and go in with a CTR through the side port and insert it into the capsule fornices. The removal of the cortex is a bit of a challenge because it gets ensnared by the CTR, but it's mandatory. You remove all the cortex and then position the lens. And I got myself bailed out of this situation. You could see it was a very dense fibrosis of a traumatic cataract. So I expand the area of the rexis so that it's well beyond the presence of the uh, fibrous ring. The patient was a young guy, and the cataract looked quite hard, though traumatic cataracts are largely soft cataracts. I have made the arcuates also to correct the astigmatism. So before you open up the eye, you need to open up the arcuate incisions. Normally, I would not stain, but this was again a situation where I needed to know whether the rexis was cut because of the fibrous ring, and there could be tissue bridges which could not have been cut by the femto disruption. But thankfully, as you can see, nearly three-fourths of the circumference has been cut. So I thought this dense area where those, the fibrosis is very intense, I tried whether I could manually exert some force, but I realized that I could end up creating a dialysis at this point of time. And however, the best of the technology you may be seated on, you may have to be, re be realistic. At this point of time, I go in with the scissors and along circumferentially in that particular area, I make a nick, ensure that I have cut the capsule margin at this point of time. The capsule, uh, the cataract looked quite hard, so I just gently do a hydro dissection at this point of time and I ensure that the rotation of the nucleus is quite complete as is necessary. But as I try, you can see it is quite actually just a disc of a hard a disc, which is not even a hard cataract. You just go on to the flip mode, and in no time I've gobbled up the thing because as it is, it has been softened and fragmented by the femto cataract platform. I try to see whether I could get some of these uh, fibrous uh, adhesions, but I realize I'm actually caught in a different mess. The whole posterior capsule gets caught in the IA, and I, in, in the aspiration probe, I go in with the infusion, try to separate it. And then I think it just did not make sense to have such a friable, uh, nearly uh, dehiscent cap capsule. So I go in and do an iatrogenic vitrectomy at this point of time, because I know it's hardly going to be a scaffold to place the IOL. So I inject a bit of triamcinolone to ensure that I've done a thorough and a good vitrectomy, that there are no vitreous strands which have got neglected. There are many other simpler ways by which you could uh, detect whether the vitreous has been removed, when you can just use your forts, uh, my marrow seal at the incision site, and then I inflate the area above the rexus and then position a three-piece lens and do an optic capture and it's well centered. This was the next situation, a significant subluxation just held in some areas with the, uh, with the zonular fibers. So I decenter my rexus on a femto cataract platform and ensure, because it, once it is centered to the uh, scleral wall, if necessary, the uh, little decentration at this point of time is mandatory. Again, uh, the uh, segmentation and the softening has been done. 
And I'm here again, I do not just bunch up the rexes, so I use my capsular rexes needle and just uh, create the rexes and it's a very soft cataract, it just comes up. But it's very important at all times, I, the AC should not shallow to increase the area of dialysis and I come to strip the area or, uh, where the cortex is being removed in the most gentle fashion and then go in with a CTR and position it such that that the long arm of the CTR comes to overlie the area of the maximum rexes. This was a traumatic cataract, I did not expect expect a progression of the zonular uh, dehiscence to increase. So I then go in and position the uh, IOL such that the haptic further stretches. This was a very severe the, the dehiscence. Again, on the femto cataract platform, I've created the rexes because it ensures that I get the right size rexes, which could be a great challenge when your cataract is subluxated and the capsule is lax. Again, I place the capsule hook such that it keeps the capsular bag taut. Removal of the cortex has to be done gently because if you pull on the capsular phonics, the whole bag would collapse. And then I position the CTR in such a fashion that it supports the bag. And now, I go in and create a small uh, triangular flap. There are different ways you could use a Hoffman pocket, but you need to ensure that this kind of subluxation, you need to uh, uh, attach it to the scleral wall. So I do the usual railroading technique. I'm sorry, I, I pass the suture and then pass the other end of the suture through the eyelet of the Ahmed segment and then push in the Ahmed segment and this is where I'm going to have a challenge. So I've managed to push it in, but it actually should just float back to occupy its space in the capsule of phonics, but it keeps coming back to the incision side. I thought, then I realized probably I've passed the suture through the layers of the corneal lamellae at this point. So I try to open it, uh, with a, uh, open it up and then I realize I've actually cut the suture of the thing. Then I bring out the Ahmed segment and by the time it has hit the capsule, I have a PCR. So I realize that I have to call the end of the game and move the CTR, go back in and do a gentle uh, anterior vitrectomy. I need to ensure that all points of time that the CTR is removed, then I inject pilocarpin and then position a iris clip lens and clip it to the uh, retro uh, portion of the iris and I bail myself out of this case. This was again another case where the ICL was there, the patient had a cataract. So I had to do certain steps. I had to increase the offset because there's an optical device in the eye. So the anterior capsule offset is increased. The posterior capsule offset is increased because there's going to be a lot of cavitation bubbles which cannot egress because the ICL is sitting in the eye. I've even decreased the vertical spots so that fewer cavitation bubbles are created. And then I just nudge the ICL out of the bag with a hand over hand technique, you can see there's a cut on the ICL. So in spite of my increasing the offsets, a cut had occurred. I was a little unsure whether the rexus has been cut in toto, but thankfully it was. But again, this was a very soft cataract. So I'm able to go on to the flip mode and just remove the entire cataract, remove the cortex gently and then position the lens. So essentially each of these cases were a problematic case in itself, but each of these small, small trips and clues uh, helped me get myself bailed out of these challenging <coughs> moments. Thank you.